Derek was a ghostwriter. And when he first reached out to me, he said, Matt, no one can afford me. I said, well, how much do you charge? He said, I charge $20,000. Now, for anyone that doesn't know what it costs to get a, a book written, right, $20,000 is like half the industry average. Like, the minimum you should be charging is $40,000. Because it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. And to do a book to the quality that he does, it takes a lot more effort. So you can't write 20,000 books in a, in a year. You can only take on a small number of clients. And it's not like you can take on seven of the writers because you've then got to train them. It's, it's tough. I said, Derek, what do you mean they can't afford you? You should be charging twice that. He said, well, they can't afford 20,000. They're definitely not going to be able to afford 40. I said, well, how did you decide? And this is an important question. How did you decide that they couldn't afford you? He said, well, people would inquire with me. I mean, he was lucky enough that he was good at Google AdWords, and people would actually inquire with him. He said, people would inquire with me and ask me questions. So I would respond. And then I would ask them questions. And emails would go up and back and up and back until they asked the question. Anyone want to take a shot at what the question was? How much does it cost, right? And then they would ask that question, and then crickets. Didn't hear from them again. So that's how I worked out that they couldn't afford me. I said, oh, that sounds terrible. What did you do? He said, well, I got fed up of everybody wasting my time. So I put my price on my website. I said, how did that go? He said, now no one contacts me. I said, all right, let me ask you a question, Derek. You're a ghostwriter, yeah? He's like, yeah. I said, what do you think your clients don't like doing? I said, well, probably writing. I said, how are you communicating with your customers again? These ridiculously long emails. They would ask questions. He would then respond with these sometimes page, page and a half responses, asking questions that would require a page, page and a half response. And this would happen for weeks until they asked the price. Now, I don't care. I mean, as a person that really struggles with reading and writing, I wouldn't care what he was charging. At the end of that, there's nothing that would make me want to work with that person. I said to Derek, I know that there's a lot of skills that you have that separate you from the person charging 1500 on Craigslist, but you're not really giving me the opportunity to understand that. And writing is kind of a really personal thing. I don't want to hire someone that I haven't spoken to before. I said, here's what I want you to do. First thing, I want you to take your price off your website, because that's not helping you get, we need to get those inquiries back. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to agree with me that you now charge $40,000. I mean, they're not paying 20, so why not charge 40, right? And then I want you to do this. Instead of doing what you're currently doing in the email dialogue, I want you to respond with just one email. Let's call the customer John. John, thank you so much for reaching out to me about your ghostwriting project. I just checked out your website. I'm ecstatic at the prospect of working with you. I actually just finished working with someone very similar to yourself, and we had an amazing working relationship. However, a successful book really comes down to the relationship between the ghost and the author. And because of that, I'd really like to get on a phone call with you to ensure that you and I are a fit. On top of that, I need to ask you a couple of additional questions before I can give you a firm quote. Below is a link to book into my schedule. Simply click below, and I look forward to speaking with you shortly. Well, Derek started to do that. And as soon as he did that, that and some sales training, he got his first phone call two weeks later. And in 40 minutes, he made $40,000. Within six weeks, he made $80,000. Now, to put this in perspective, he'd made $27,000 for the year in 2013. In October of 2014, he'd reached out to me. He'd made 12,000 for the entire year. 40,000 in two weeks, 80,000 in six weeks. By the end of the year, 120. By the end of the following year, he made just shy of 300,000. Now, a lot of people assume that when I say this, they'll assume that that's the reason why Derek is on the cover of my book. Well, it's the reason why Derek got the ghostwriting project. Because I'm like, well, you're a great case study. I'm going to get you to write my book. But it's not the reason why he's on my cover. The reason why he's on my cover is about halfway through the process of writing this book, Derek reached out to me. And he said, Matt, the market has changed. And I said, what do you mean the market's changed? He said, well, the market's changed. Now I'm doing everything exactly the way you said. But now they're going away. They're thinking about it. And then they're ghosting me. Now, I didn't know what ghosting meant back then. but..." Seems that this is a really common word. They were just disappearing and never getting back to him. 
So I said, well, are you doing everything exactly the way that we structured? He said, yeah, everything exactly. I said, really, Derek, exactly the same way? He goes, well, I might have changed a few things. He changed everything. See, here's the thing about a sales process. Sales is a system, like anything else. It's a series of steps. And once you've got a structured process, especially once you've got a structured process that's working for you, you have to treat it like a science experiment. You can change one thing at a time, see if it makes a better result or hurts your results. But if you change multiple things, you don't know what's working and what's not working. And because of that, you just, you, you can't possibly work out why your sales process or why the clients are disappearing. So what I said to Derek is I said, what I want you to do is I want you to go back to the exact same process that you had when you first started. So he did. He went back to the exact same process. And within the space of two months, he locked in a client that took him to Switzerland, a $50,000 ghostwriting deal. The second deal was another $50,000 deal, $100,000 in less than two months that took him to London for another author retreat. It's the first time that he's managed to take his wife to Europe. Be careful of the stories we tell ourselves, right? And when we're in the sales process or when we have salespeople, it's so common that we believe their excuses as fact or believe our own excuses as fact. And we have to ask ourselves the question, when did we decide that? So what can we learn from this? The difference between sales success and sales failure can be one simple thing you're not seeing, which is why it's so vitally important to learn the process.